Tree. Welcome. If you're viewing for the first time, my name is Pastor Ian. We're here at the Rock Church and we are in Psalm 63. We're in the Psalm every single night, every single day. We come together for one hour to get into God's Word and allow God to grow us and allow God to speak to us. We are an online church, a church without walls. And every night we gather together and you are more than welcome to gather with us. It's night 63 day 63 psalm 63 we're going to get into a psalm of david and it says this a psalm of david when he was in the desert of judah it says you god are my god verse one you god are my god earnestly i seek you i thirst for you my whole being longs for you in the dry and parched land where there is no water let's read that one more time you god are my god king david earnestly I seek you I thirst for you my whole being longs for you in the dry and parched land where there is no water you know what it's like it's been beautiful weather today can you imagine it's so hot and you're working out in the garden or you're walking out on the street or you're walking in the park and the sun is beating down on you and then you just need a drink you just need some water and the colder the water the better it is just to quench your thirst and david is here he's in a desert place and he goes as i desire water in this desert place my body uh, uh, um, desires water. Uh, there's a thirst within my body to drink water. It's so hot. It's so humid. There's a, uh, my thirst needs to be quenched with water. So my relationship with you, God, is a quenching to my spirit, man. David's talking about a desert here, a physical desert. But I believe that David is also talking about a spiritual desert. Here's a question for you. Are you spiritually in a desert today? Are you spiritually in the dry land? Is the heat of circumstance and situation just beating down on you? Are you uh, needing a, a quench spiritually? Needing water spiritually? Needing a drink? Maybe your relationship with God isn't the way that you want it to be isn't the way that it should be or isn't the way that it used to be and therefore you are dry in your relationship with him just like David just like you just like me today out in the hot sun a drink of juice a drink of water will quench your thirst well today tonight get in yourself in the presence of the most high god would be like quenching your thirst with water it will quench your spiritual thirst david says you are my god he declares that he is his god and if you declare tonight that king jesus is your god that's the beginning of your thirst of your spiritual dryness being changed you can be transformed tonight by declaring that god is your god and seeking his face he says you are my god and earnestly do i seek you god isn't playing hide and seek god isn't hiding from you god is there right in front of your face but so much stuff has got in front of you so much circumstance so much depression so much uh, busyness of life has got in front of you and god and yet god feels a million miles away god feels like he's not even close you can't see him but the truth of the matter is he's right in front of your nose but you put so much stuff in there insecurity fear what if and and doubt and unbelief and worry and uh, question marks in front but in between you and god remove those uh, question marks remove those circumstances by saying god you are my god by declaring god is your god all those things that seem so big that are really insignificant they flee and they move out of the way so you can lock eyes upon jesus david had such a close relationship with god he actually says that um, he had a heart after god he, he knew god's heartbeat he had a heart after god they say 
you can have a close relationship with somebody you can get so close to somebody that you can see your reflection in their eyeballs you can get so close up to somebody's face that you can see your reflection in their eyes David had a close relationship with God that's how he knew God's heartbeat he was able to see the heartbeat of God your relationship with God can be that close tonight can I get an amen where you can see your reflection in the eyes of God where you get so close to God where you get so intimate with him where you start declaring that he is your God your rescue your rescuer your refuge your hiding place all those words that we looked at yesterday that David was just expanding our vocabulary about God being our rock about God being our fortress about God being our high tower about God being our hiding place you can be in that relationship with him can I get an amen just light up that page right now if you just agree right that God is an awesome God and God is a mighty God just press that light button let's just cheer for God's faithfulness let's just cheer how awesome he is come on now amen don't forget like this page share this page on your wall now let let Facebook know um, let Facebook will know let your friends know and uh, that we are live right now that we are live this isn't just me the pre-recorded this is us together live right now let's share it to the world let's get as many people hearing about how awesome our God is my whole being longs for you and here's another question does your whole being long for God uh, if not which part of you longs for God have you got a section of you that you say well that, that part of me I, I give to God on a Sunday or that part of me I give to God um, early in the morning when I get up and pray but the rest of the, the day you're not aware of him uh, David saying my whole being everything in me everything every thought every intention every dream every vision every word every step every move I make my whole being longs for you God wouldn't it be great to be in that position where we can put a hand on our heart and we can say 100% that my whole being is after God now if you can't say that yet then it's something to aim towards if you can say that then that's incredible and that's wonderful protect that but for those that can't say that yet then there's no condemnation in Christ but there's a place you can be where you can say my whole being my whole being everything within me longs for God because let me tell you this when everything in you longs for God then the decisions you make are a lot easier we get in difficult or we decisions become very difficult when we there's us that has one decision and then there's us that has the decision that we know we are meant to make uh, and then there's that bit of a tug of war inside of us but if you're completely sold out to God then it's really easy to make decisions and it's a it's an awful lot easier to be the decision maker because now your decisions are totally based upon your complete reliance upon God so therefore your filter of knowing what decision to make is based upon your relationship with him and if your whole being longs for him then there's no tug of war inside of you uh, you've managed to grow in God so the flesh when it had victory in your life once and then the flesh when when you had a tug of war and um, you know the things you wanted to do and and you had that tug of war as you've grown in God that tug of war has got less and less and less Paul said himself the amazing apostle Paul uh, that he struggles within himself well I believe that 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 struggle that Paul had was real and and happened uh, but uh, 
as he went on with his relationship with God, that tug of war, that struggle that will always be evident in around us will always be there while we're on this earth. But the ability to overcome, um, the ability to walk righteous, it gets easier and easier, not because the circumstances get easier, but because you get to know God more. And you, 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 you learn to really surrender your life to God. So therefore, you're not struggling as you were when you first got saved. When you first became a Christian and you had that battle, that battle isn't as much of a battle now because you've now grown in God. Amen? As you draw closer to Him, as you, as you push into Him, you'll start to experience God's power. Amen. He then says, My whole being longs for you in the dry parched land where there's no water. Saying, God, just like if I was out in that this desert now, that's, my body is longing for water, while my spirit is also longing for water. Amen. You, I have seen you in the sanctuary and behold your power and your glory. Verse 2, verse 3 now. Because your love is better than life. My lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live and in your name I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips my mouth will praise you. Amen. Let's just go back here. I have seen you in the sanctuary and behold your power and your glory. I have seen you in the sanctuary. Don't you just love church? Um, one of my favorite places on earth is church. Why? Because I've seen the power of God in people's lives in church. When we worship together, when we praise together, I have seen the power of God move. Amen. And one thing I just love about God, right, is his power. He's an incredible God. He's an awesome God. And I've seen the power of God. Amen. <laughs> and so he says here that I have seen you in the sanctuary. Right? I've seen your power. I've seen your might. Hallelujah. And I think that's just absolutely brilliant that we can see the power and the might of God. Amen. I have seen you in the sanctuary and behold your power and your glory. Amen. Your power and your glory. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> because your love is what? It's better than life your love is better than life God's love is so powerful God's love is so strong God's love is better than life itself nothing can compare to the love of God amen it's his love that uh, captured us it's his love that saved us amen his love is better than life <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't you just love the God? Amen. Don't you just love God? Hallelujah. Amen. Then it says, I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. I will fully I'll be fully satisfied as with the riches of foods, and with lips on my mouth will I praise you. Two things here, two questions. Number one, do you lift up your hands? Number two, do you lift up your voice? Number one, do you lift up your hands? It says here that I will be fully satisfied. Um, I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. Lift up your hands. Uh, well, what is lifting up of your hands? Well, when you do this in any country, right, in any nation, when you do this, it means you surrender. When somebody points a gun at you, you surrender. When a police officer says, stop, put your hands in the air, you put your hands in the air. You surrender. 
David says, I lift up my hands. David says, I surrender. David says, that's a universal sign language of you and I saying, I surrender to God. I surrender to him. Come on now. <laughs> We've seen his power in the sanctuary. We've seen his glory in the sanctuary. We've seen God move in his church, move in the body of Christ. We've seen the power of God. We've seen the glory of God. We've seen the anointing of God. We've seen the gifts of the Spirit. We've seen the gift of prophecy, the gift of preaching and teaching. We've seen the gift of the evangelist, the gift of the pastor. We've seen the prophetic word go out. We've seen the gifts of healing ministry. We've seen the power and we've seen the glory in church. You've seen it. I've seen it in the sanctuary we've seen it and we know that God is alive we know that Jesus reigns and so therefore we will lift and I would praise you as long as I live we declare that I would praise you as long as I live then it says and in your name I will lift up my hands I lift up my hands in your name in the name of Jesus I surrender the name of Jesus I worship the name of Jesus I am I am just it, it's no longer me I'm not carrying anything I'm not holding anything I'm fully surrendered to God so number one do you lift up your hands fully surrender do you lift up your hands and worship do you lift up your hands and say I'm not carrying anything God I'm totally yours tonight do you do that do you lift up your hands tonight you've seen his power You've seen his glory. You can't, you can't deny. You can't pretend. You've seen the power of God. And yet still, people that have seen the power of God still say, Oh, yeah, Lord, pray for me. Pray for me. I'm, I'm really struggling. Have you seen his power? Yes, I've seen his power. Have you seen his glory? Yes, I've seen the glory. I felt the presence. I've seen God here. But I still need you to pray for me. No, no, no. No, your response after seeing the power and your response after seeing the glory is to throw up your hands in the air and surrender. Come on. <laughs> The reason why you've seen the power, you've seen the glory, but you've not experienced it yourself or you're not operating it is because you haven't thrown up your hands. Man, people throw up their hands in concerts. They throw up their hands at football matches. They throw up their hands when they win the lottery. They throw up their hands. People throw up their hands for many other reasons and many times. But have you thrown up your hands to Jesus? You've seen his glory. You've seen his power. You've seen him in the sanctuary. You've seen him work. Now throw up those hands baby throw them up and say god i'm surrendered surrender to you fully surrenders and i stand with arms high and heart abandoned in awe of the one who gave it all we sing the stand and it's a powerful chorus because it's a, a song of surrender then it says this I will praise you as long as I live. In your name I lift my hands. I will be fully satisfied. Um, I will be fully satisfied as with the riches of food, food with singing lips, my mouth will praise you. Amen. We've seen his power. We've seen his glory. We've thrown up our hands in the air. And now he's saying, right, with singing lips, my mouth will we praise you. Question number one, have you surrendered and thrown your hands up in the air? Question number two, when was the last time that you sang to the Lord? When was the last time that you worshipped him? When was the last time? I'm not talking about singing songs. I'm not talking about singing along to rock radio, even though rock radio is great. And I'm not talking about just coming along on a Sunday and singing songs. But when was the last time that you worshipped God, whether it be listen to rock radio or whether it be on a Sunday service or whether it be just a time that you were in a in, in in church where you sang in worship you 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 emptied yourself out with worship amen god is looking for people who will worship him in spirit and in truth you've chucked your hands up in the air you've surrounded surrendered to him and you said god i worship you now sing 
come on now sing right now where you are sing right sing may there be a song that rises up in your heart may there be a song of praise and a song of breakthrough and a song of deliverance and a song of joy that you just start singing grab a song grab a song that you love I mean look at the song that we have at the beginning at the end of our gatherings uh, the, the UK blessing it's an incredible song and you can worship to him when was the last time you worshipped God with all your heart with all your soul with everything in you so question number one are you surrendered are your hands up in the air and question number two are you singing and are you worshipping and are you emptying yourself out in praise because these are breakthrough um, situations in your life if you've not put your hands up in the air for whatever reason some people go well I'm not that character type I don't like to sing I don't like to put my hands up in the air we're all different there's no space here for different (laughs) there's space here for throwing your hands up in the air and worshipping you can't use an excuse that that's not your character type. You can't use an excuse where well, that's not just me. Well, it has to be you. Why? Because David is saying that you need to throw your hands up in the air. You need to get a revelation of his love. You need to experience the power and the glory in the in the, in the the church, in the body of Christ. You need to throw your hands up and say, I surrender to you, God. I can see your power. I can see your glory. My soul longs for you. Everything within my body, my whole body yearns for you man whether you're introvert extrovert whether you're male or female whether you're young old whether you're black or white whether you're rich or poor every single one of us we can't get away with it we can't use an excuse every one of us need to be longing for God with every bone in our body with every passion of our heart and we need to be seeing God's power seeing God's glory experiencing the power of the gifts of the spirit in the body of Christ throwing our hands up in the air in surrender and then declaring with our mouths of how awesome and how incredible he is and singing a song of surrender singing a song of sacrifice singing a song of breakthrough come on now i need a drink (laughs) wow let's not get too excited bank holiday monday but we can do it we don't have to pretend to do it he really is awesome He really is amazing. He really is incredible. He really has delivered you. He really has delivered me. He really has saved you and saved me. And that fills our heart with complete surrender and and, and just awesomeness. David danced before the people naked. He was so undignified in his praising God that he threw off his clothes, right? I don't know how, but he just was, he, 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 you know, you know, we say that, you know, God would bless your socks off. Well, God blessed his clothes off. I don't know how, but he was dancing naked. And his wife said to him, come on now, you shouldn't really be dancing naked. Uh, we have maid servants around here we have young girls around here you know it's not proper for a king to be dancing naked and you know what david responded david said i am i am praising god i know you know i know you think i'm making a fool of myself i know i am making a fool of myself but you know what I don't care because praise becomes higher than any other fear of of uh, embarrassment so therefore I will become even more undignified than this if it means that God gets the praise now if David can throw his clothes off maid servants watch the wife nag at him and say stop embarrassing yourself and he's able to turn around and say I will become even more undignified than this then how much more should we be able to just put our hands in the air open our mouths and give God the praise come on keep your clothes on we're not asking you to take your clothes off we are not asking you to embarrass yourself but what we are saying is is if David can do that and he was the king of Israel surely we can raise our hands surely we can lift our voices surely we can give God the praise praise yourself out of depression praise yourself out of a small mindedness release the the entrepreneurial mindset in you 
by just declaring that God is the God of the universe and the heavens. Take your mind off here and now and put your mind on, on the amazingness of God. Take your mind off the news. Take your mind off Corona. Take your mind off uh, recession. Take your mind off the economy and put your mind into glory, into the presence of God where angels fly from north to south and east to west crying out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was, who is, and is to come. And when they go from one side to the next, they turn around and they go back. They go from north to south, from south to north, from east to west, from west to east, crying, holy, 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 it's the Lord God Almighty. And I have met people who don't worship in worship services because they say, oh, it's repetitive. When they sing the chorus a second time or a third time, I think it's repetitive and it's not my character type. So I sit down in worship at that point. And how stupid do they sound? How idiotic, uh, how crazy and idiotic is that kind of mindset? When they get to glory, the angels, the winged creature uh, and it goes from north to south east to west crying holy 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 is the Lord God Almighty who was who is to come amen and he will repeat that the angel would repeat you come and say hey we've heard enough now angel sit down you're repeating yourself come on when you're in love with Jesus when you're fully just just drunk in the presence of God drunk on his love drunk on his uh, intoxicated with his presence and, and the revelation of how awesome he is then you become undignified you become somebody who doesn't really care what people think because it's about God being worshipped and you repeat yourself God you're awesome God you're awesome God you're awesome God you're awesome and you don't think well I've said that three times now uh, maybe God doesn't want to hear it God loves you telling him right who he is and he absolutely loves it when you repeat yourself he doesn't just want to go god you're awesome you're mighty and you're incredible thank you speak to you later he wants you to be in a time of, in his presence god you're awesome you're mighty you're incredible you're awesome you're mighty you're incredible you're incredible you're mighty you're awesome you're awesome you're mighty you're mighty you're incredible God does not mind repetition. He loves repetition. He's okay with repetition. So take your mind and your limitations and get your heart and get my heart connected to the worship of the Most High God. He is worthy of our worship. Amen. <laughs> he is an incredible God. Debbie, don't get self-conscious. Right? No more time from this point on. No more time. The reason why you're self-conscious is because you worry what people think. The reason why you're worried about what people think is because you're insecure. And you think they might think bad of you. And the reason why you think bad of you, why, why you're worried that they will think bad of you, is because you don't think highly of yourself. And the reason why you don't think highly of yourself, because you don't know how much God thinks you are. He thinks you're awesome, Debbie. And he thinks you're wonderful, Debbie. And you're the apple of his eye, Debbie. And he thinks you're his daughter and his princess, Debbie. And if you knew how God felt about you you'll never be worried another day in your life what anybody thinks about you when you know that the king of kings and the lord of lords the creator who flung the stars into space that thinks that you are absolutely marvelous and because of that you go well you know what who god thinks i'm incredible god thinks i'm awesome god thinks i'm wonderful so therefore does it really matter what other people think let me tell you david got that revelation and that's why he was not intimidated by what people full and he was not self-conscious even to the point of dancing naked and what's the most self-conscious thing that you could ever do do you want anybody to see you naked absolutely not there couldn't be anything more embarrassing could there nothing more embarrassing than people seeing you naked right nothing more embarrassing and yet David took the most embarrassing thing that you and I could ever dream or think about and he danced 
because he just had a revelation that God is his God, God is his Lord, God is his Father. Come on now. So I'm telling you, whenever we worry about what people say, it's because we're insecure in ourselves. Well, when Christ comes in us, and I'm not saying that on there, I'm not saying that on there, I don't think any of us, right, would be confident enough to say, right, that's it, tonight I'm dancing naked. <laughs> right, so, but what I'm saying to you is, right, we can get to a point where we realize, right, that how God views us overshadows what anyone else views us. You're never going to get 100% people like you 100% of the time. You're always going to get enemies. You're always going to get people pointing fingers. You're always going to get doubt and unbelief. But the first person you've got to talk to, the first person that's going to, or the person that's going to give you the most doubt and the most unbelief, and the person that's going to criticize you the most is yourself. Amen? It's yourself. And we look at ourselves and we judge ourselves. And quite often we think people are judging us um, in a particular way. Right, and they, they're not quite often, they're not even bothered about us. But the way that we feel about ourselves, we think, Well, that's how I feel. Maybe they, maybe they feel that way as well. Come on now, let's get a revelation of His love. And He said here very clearly that there was a revelation of God's love. And He said that, uh, Where was it? it? Oops, He said that in verse, um, My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and behold your power and your glory because your love is better than life. My lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. I will, I will, and in your name I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied with the riches of food. Um, with singing lips, my mouth will praise you. There we go. Just before that, because your love is better than life. Debbie, William, Anne, Saku, Jenny, Get a revelation tonight by the gift of the Holy Spirit that his love is better and more beneficial than the very next breath you're about to breathe. If we get a revelation that God's love is better than life, then we won't be so concerned about what people think in life. We put too many eggs in one basket. We put all our hopes and our dreams, all our aspirations in the basket of life. This life, this is not the life that uh, is the best life. God has a better life for us. We can be alive on this world, but we can live in the life of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. I don't know what music's coming on now. This is still uh, instrumental music from Hill Songs. Um, but this one sounds like a Chinese restaurant, so I'm getting quite hungry actually. Just Oh, it's Asian Indian restaurant. Let let me change that. <laughs> I'll be ordering a chicken tikka. Garlic naan, billah rice, finko. Amen. Okay, let's get into the next bit. Verse 6. On my bed, there's only 11 verses. On my bed, I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help. Now, stop, stop, stop there a moment. Okay. A lot of people that dear, dear, <laughs> a lot of people that deal with anxiety, a lot of people that live with fear and worry um, and depression, a lot of people that are going through this kind of mindset and and we pray for, if there's anybody listening now, we, we, we pray for you guys. It's not a, a nice thing, but let me tell you what happens. Um, when you're dealing with anxiety, quite often um, you can't sleep at night. Quite often you lay awake at night, you wake up in the early hours, and you try to sleep with this anxiety and this thought and, and, and things are mulling through your mind and, and going through your head. And then maybe you drift off to sleep, but then when you wake back up, you're thinking about the same 
worry and anxiety that you had when you drifted off to sleep. Now you can't get back to sleep. So what they do, you go downstairs and you watch a bit of telly and then, then you try to go back to bed and you still can't sleep and then it's morning time and you wake up and now you have a headache and now your body's feeling weak and, and um, now you've got to crack on with the rest of the day and you've got to pretend like everything's normal and everything isn't normal but you don't want to tell anybody because now you're embarrassed uh, about what you're going through. Now the devil kicks in and now you feel guilty because no one else is going through depression, you think. Nobody else has anxiety. It's just me. What's wrong with me? And this becomes a, a circle uh, of a life that you, you're in. Then you come to church or you join online and, and, and the pastor says, come on, let's worship God. And you think, well, it's easier said than done. I, I agree with what you're saying, but you know, it, it's easier said than done. That this is not just something I can just snap out of. Uh, this is my life, and this is what I know, and I don't want this, but this is where I'm at. And so then you start to take advice from doctors. Well, well, we give you these tablets, and and so you take these tablets that help you sleep, and they do help you sleep, but the side effect of them is that they knock you out. So therefore, even though you're getting sleep, it's still not dealing with the issue why you couldn't sleep. But you take them because if you don't take them, then you become ill because you won't sleep. So then you take these tablets and now these tablets become part of your life. And then you come to church and then the pastor says, come on, let's, let, let's be healed. And you think it's easy for you to say, but this is part of my life. I'm, I'm, I now can't sleep. Uh, I take these tablets and, and if I don't take the tablets, then I won't be able to sleep. And, and so therefore I have to take the tablets. So it's easy for you to say, but it's not your life, but it's my life. And I think I'm the only one going through it. So then the devil kicks in again. And so now you have guilt that you're taking tablets because you've been to church and the pastor has said, don't take the tablets. Or the pastor has said, come on, you shouldn't be dealing with this. Now you've got more guilt because of this and you don't want to deal with it, but yet it's your life. And it's really interesting because the stuff that we worry about is the very stuff that keeps us awake. But David here he talks about something else that keeps him awake. Now, remember, the guy's been chased down. The guy's been chased to be murdered. Uh, they want to kill him. Uh, the, 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 the most powerful king in the world at that time is chasing after him. He's got stuff to stay awake. There's reasons why he should be anxious. There's reasons, man, there's real reasons why he should be fearful. But yeah, I just love this. In verse 6, on my bed, I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. This guy, this guy doesn't sleep every night. He doesn't sleep all the way through the night. He stays awake and he's kept up by fear of being murdered or fear of being killed. No, he's kept up because of God. His passion for God keeps him up. He's not staying awake through the watches of the night. The watches, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, the hours of the night. He's not kept awake out of fear, but yet he should be fearful. And nobody could criticize him for that. He should be fearful. He's kept up at night thinking of how good and how awesome God is. Come on now, may you never spend another hour of the night awake, worrying and being anxious about stuff in your life. May you wake up tonight, not out of fear or anxiety. May you wake up tonight out of adoration and overflow of love and gratitude for God. May you wake up tonight with your hands held high and with your mouth worshipping. May you come alive tonight and right now in the name of Jesus I declare not another night, not another hour that you wake up out of anxiety. I break off that anxiety right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I rebuke that demonic influence of fear and insecurity. And listen guys, it's nothing less than demonic. It's nothing less than a demonic influence. Don't think anxiety, that's 
that's just you no 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 that's not you you weren't made to have it you weren't made to deal with it in fact you cannot deal with anxiety right you were not made to deal with it so the reason when you go I just can't deal with it is because you weren't made to deal with it I can't deal with it you can't deal with it everyone online cannot deal with it because we were not created to handle anxiety the Bible says bring cast your cares upon to Jesus when you have anxiety take it to Jesus he's dealt with it he's dealt with it at the cross take it to the foot of the cross when you have fear take it to Jesus when you have doubt and belief take it to Jesus don't try to hold it don't say well that's you know there was a time in your life when you was not anxious right and when anxiety came in your life you were like well this is not me this is not that and you rejected it right but then all of a sudden you accepted it and now you think it's part of you uh, but if you look back how many years have you been anxious you might go it's been five years been seven ten years 15 20 years i don't know but there was a time in you when you wasn't anxious now you might go i've always been anxious since i was a kid well i bet you a, i bet you a million pounds you haven't but you've been living with anxiety for so many years it feels like you've had it since day one let me tell you right now right now you and you are not created to deal with anxiety that's why you're struggling with it because you were never created to deal with it but jesus he took our pain he took our sickness he took our anxiety he took our fear on the cross give it to jesus tonight come on just give it to him lay at the foot of the cross and give it to jesus man you were created to worship you were created to praise you were created to throw your hands up that's what you created it that's why right the devil wants you not to put your hands in the air the devil wants to stop you from going to church and worshiping and pray the devil's trying to stop you from doing that because he knows the moment you do that and the moment you do that the moment you you worship god you will come into the very thing you created to be the very person you created to be is found in that place of worship Glennis, 20 years, 20 years. Now, let me tell you this. I don't know how old you are, Glennis, okay? I don't know how old you are, but if you've been dealing with it for 20 years, right, then that may, you'll have to tell me how old you are, right? But that may be half your life. That may be less than half your life. So that 20 years, you feel that's part of you now, but you've been alive more than 20 years. So at some point 20 years ago, for some reason, that came in. And you maybe know that reason why it came in. And so therefore, because there's a justified reason, you accepted it. Let me tell you, there'll be stuff that happens in your life and my life that it would make sense for me to be angry. It makes sense for me not to forgive. It makes sense for you to be fearful. And it makes sense for you to be worried. But God... God will give you the ability not to take on hurt, not to take on unforgiveness, not to take on bitterness. It doesn't make sense in the natural, but in the supernatural, it makes sense. So Glennis, you're 56. You've been dealing 20 years with anxiety. So that means 36 years you lived without anxiety. So you've lived more of your life, 36 years without anxiety, but all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, but 20 years ago, it came into your life and it's lived in your life. You've lived, now you won't think of this because when you're anxious, you think, well, I've always been anxious. Think about it now, just now, Glennis. 36 years, you've been without anxiety. 20 years, you've been with. But in your mind, you might be thinking, well, that's just my lot now. That's just what I've been dealing with. Think about it. If you've been able to deal, live life um, more, right, 36 years without anxiety, then these 20 years that are saying to you, that's it now, you're living with me, it's a lie. It's a lie. And so right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you, and I pray that God will just break off this anxiety right now in the name of Jesus, that you won't go another 20 years or another two years or another two months or another two weeks with this anxiety it would go in the name of jesus glenn as the bible says who the sun sets free is free indeed and jesus is just setting you free right now right now right now just while you're sitting there watching this you may not know what's going on you may not even experience anything but right now in the spiritual realm god is doing stuff in your heart in your spirit in your life you will be free in the name of jesus of this anxiety you will be you will be even freer than you were for those 36 years you will know a new level of freedom amen
but declare who he is declare you God are my God declare that he is your God and earnestly seek him then throw your hands in the air uh, and worship him and you'll see the power and the glory of God in you amen on my bed I remember you verse 7 it says because you are my help I will sing in the shadow of your wings I cling to you your right hand upholds me those who seek my life will be destroyed listen to this because you are my help he's our refuge he's our help our salvation okay I sing in the shadow of your wings I cling to you your right hand upholds me remember we were saying that the right hand of God means strength and means power because of this close relationship that David has with God it says he knows that God sees help Glennis God is your help tonight whoever's watching he's your help tonight he says I will sing in the shadow of your wings you can sing in the safety of God's wings you can stand in there and you can sing amen you can sing your heart out and worship him you're in the safety of God he says I cling to you and your right hand upholds me I cling to you Glennis and Saku Susan Victor Fatima um, Vera who else we got Karen Debbie cling to him tonight then he says this those who seek my life will be destroyed who's seeking your life tonight depression is who's seeking your life tonight anxiety is who is seeking your life the devil is the enemy is the lies they're seeking your life fear is seeking your life and he says those who seek my life will be destroyed they will go down to the depths of the earth they will be given over to the sword and become food for jackals but the king will rejoice in God David saying I will rejoice in God all who swear by God will give him glory that's me that's you while the moths of liars will be silence listen fear is a liar and anxiety is a liar the devil is a liar worry and anger all these emotions jealousy they're lies from the devil they're lies and they have no power in your life they have no victory in my life but the moment we give them a foothold the moment we believe them we give them legs and we empower them but the de God saying here is the devil has no power. The only power the devil has is what we give to him. The power had the devil. Uh, 2,000 years ago, Jesus came, gave his life. He went to, to hell and he took back the keys of Hades. He took back the power uh, of, of sickness and disease. He took back the power of sin. So when it says here, those who seek my life will be destroyed. They will go down to the depths of the earth. Depression is not you anxiety is not you it's not just something that you are now that you've had to deal with it's coming to your life for whatever reason and there may be a good reason I'm not saying there's not a good reason but maybe 20 years ago or 10 years ago or 15 years ago or five years ago depression came into your life because something happened to you and therefore depression came and everybody said it's okay it's understandable and because that's happened in your life here's here's some uh, tablets to help you sleep this is what's happened because you're sick or you're ill or because you've had a bad experience or because this has happened or that's happened then therefore it's normal right it's normal and let me tell you it might be normal for somebody in your position who's had the life experience or has had a sickness or has had an accident in their life it might be normal it might be acceptable in the world standard the doctors might say this is absolutely normal right for you to be going through this right and that may be true in the natural sense I'm not arguing with that but the moment you come into Christ a lot of things that are normal now become abnormal and so therefore before Christ right you would live with depression or anxiety or sickness or fear uh, uh, you might be anxious because of stuff that's happening in your life and that's normal but the moment you become adopted into the family of God the natural things 
are superseded by the supernatural. You're still natural, and there's still natural things that are happening, and we're not denying the natural things. But when the natural things come and people say that's normal, you need to get around of God's people, and God's people say that's abnormal. What they're telling you is normal is abnormal. They're telling you that you'll never get rid of this. I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, you will. They're telling you that you have to live with this. I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, you lay it down at the foot of the cross. They're saying that you're going to have to just deal with this now. And that's just how your body's going to be. That's how your mind's going to be. That's just the way it is. I am telling you that my God answers prayer. My God answers fasting. My God answers obedience. My God answers. He's a God of signs, wonders, and miracles. He's a God of the impossible. And so what we have been told by so many people is normal, right? It might be for them, but for you it's not. And so therefore, people like you, Glennis, it's not normal for you. Why? Because you're a daughter of the king. Why? Because he loves you incredibly. Why? Because he, you're the apple of his eye. So it's not normal for you. Right? Because God wouldn't want you in anxiety. God wouldn't want you in fear. God wouldn't want you. Why? Because you're his daughter and he wants the best for you. Is it good for you not to sleep at night because of anxiety? No, it isn't. Is it good for you to have to take medication to sleep? No, it isn't. So you say, well, Pastor, what do we do about it? Do Psalm 63. Do Psalm 63. Declare you are my God. Earnestly seek him. First for him. Depend on him. Throw your hands up in the air. Worship him with your mouth. Uh, be part of the sanctuary. Be part of the church. See the glory. See the splendor. Grow yourself in God, which is what we're all doing tonight. Grow yourself in God. And then understand this. that Cling to him. And as you cling to him, his right hand, his hand. I haven't got, I wish I had a sword. This is my sword. The pen's the sword, they say. He takes up his sword the right hand and he cuts off those tentacles of the depression and those 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 suckers of of, of lies of, of of deceit and insecurity and he cuts it off in the name of Jesus with his sword with the word of God with his hand not you you can't cut it off amen the reason why you think that you can't deal with it uh, because you're not made to deal with it and the reason why you are going through it is because you think well I can't cut it off no you can't but Jesus can his right hand he will come and cut off and those who will seek your life the depression that seeks your life the sickness that this seeks your life the anxiety that seeks your life what will be will be destroyed amen will be destroyed and God's not just going to make it a little bit better. God's not just going to make it a little bit easier. God's not just going to be, well, I tell you what, I could, I tell you what, Glennis or, or Jenny or Fatima or Tracy, uh, I'm just going to make it a little bit easier. No, my God, right? He's going to come and he's going to destroy, destroy. No, no, you know, it, destroy is like, I don't know, it's just bigger than kill, it's bigger than cease, it's bigger than stop. Destroy is destroy. Our God is going to destroy the lies of the enemy in your life. Our God's going to destroy the sickness in your life. Our God is going to destroy, destroy the lies of the devil in your life. He destroy fear. He destroy anxiety. Come on. Hallelujah. Our God is a God that would come in and he will radically change you. So claim that promise of God. Claim Psalm 63. Make sure that you're in obedience to it. Make sure you're worshipping him. Make sure that you're praising him. But understand that God, not you, God will destroy anxiety. Not you. God will destroy fear. Not you. God will destroy unforgiveness and bitterness and jealousy. God will destroy it. And when it's destroyed, it means it cannot come back. It's destroyed. It's finished. May we get a revelation of how God destroys the lies of the enemy in our life. Come on now. Wow. I wasn't expecting that from Psalm 63. But you know, when God's moving, we started late. Stuff wasn't working. I was, I was rushing behind. And we didn't have time to, to really get in and prepare. But I'm telling you, God, 
God has uh, led us tonight. Amen. God has led us tonight. I just pray for every one of you right now. Lord, I pray for every person dealing with depression, every person dealing with anxiety. Right now, Lord, Holy Spirit, just, just touch their lives right now. Just put your hands out, guys. Just, just put your hands out um, like you're going to receive a, a gift. God's going to put something into you. That's uh, Just put your hands out like it says here in, in Psalms. God, as people stretch out their hands in front of them, as, they, as their hands are open, Lord Father, they want to receive a touch from you. So Holy Spirit, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, just minister, just fill people. Just fill people up, Lord Father, with your presence. Lord, as you fill them up, Lord Father, push out depression. Push out anxiety as you fill them up, Lord, with your presence. Push out fear. Push out insecurity. Lord, lack of identity, go in the name of Jesus. Fear, go in the name of Jesus. Worry, concern, go in the name of Jesus. Lord, right now, right now, Lord Father, the people dealing with um, stuff in their bodies, Lord Father, people going through um, situations, Lord Father, going through operations, on medication, people going through chemo, people going uh, through the menopause, Lord Father, people going through uh, many different uh, changes within them, Lord Father, give them the grace right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, to be able to deal with treatment, to be able to deal with menopause, to be able to deal with a radical change in chemistry within their bodies. Lord Father, the shock to the body, Lord. Give them the grace in their mind, in their heart, in their spirit, Lord Father. And the fear that would enter, the anxiety that would enter, Lord, it will not enter in the name of Jesus. If it has entered, may it go now in the mighty name of Jesus. We rebuke the lies of the devil. We rebuke the lies of the devil. The weapons, the arrows that he's fired of fear and insecurity and doubt and unbelief. Lord, right now, we just put the shield of faith up and we rebuke those arrows. We rebuke, Lord Father, the attack of the enemy. Lord, give us a fresh revelation of your power. Give us a fresh revelation, Lord Father, of um, your love for us. Give us a fresh revelation of who we are to you and what we mean to you. So God, we will never, Lord, we, we, we will never fear what man thinks of us because we've got a fresh revelation every day of how much you think of us. And Lord, even though we don't want people to think bad of us, Lord God, we don't, we don't hang our hats on people's opinion. We don't hang our identity on what people think. We hang our identity on what you think. So give us a fresh revelation of what you think, Lord Father, of your sons and your daughters. But God, may freedom come tonight. May people sleep for the first night, uh, uh, for the first time in a long time, Lord God. May people find peace just enter their heart right now, Lord, and, and hope and joy right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Cause people to smile that have never, they've not smiled for a long time. Lord, cause people just to be at peace. They've not had peace for a long time. Cause people just to relax and be able to daydream. <laughs> be able to not be always thinking about what's happening, what challenge they're going through, but be able to sit down and, and just actually think about nothing. Just actually be at peace and the heart be at peace. And God, then the heart thinks about you and the mind thinks about you rather than a circumstance or situation. God, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we ask that you just touch every single person under the sound of my voice, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, right now, if you're watching and you've never invited Christ into your life, then this will be an incredible time for you to receive Jesus. So I'm going to say a prayer now. If you would like to know Jesus as Lord and Savior, or if you would like to come back to your relationship with God and have this first thing for God and this longing for God that David did, it's in challenging scripture because it shows how close we can get to God. And maybe we've listened to this tonight and read this and go, you know what? I'm nowhere near. <laughs> I'm nowhere near how close David was to God. I, I want to be longing for God. I, I, I want to be in that place uh, of relationship with God. And if that's you, we're just going to say a prayer right now. And we're going to introduce you to Jesus. Amen. So would you just bow your heads with me and close your eyes and repeat these words after me. Father God, thank you for sending your son, Jesus 
Jesus, we thank you that you died for my sin. That my wrongdoing and, and, and what should have been my suffering, my penalty, you took. You stepped out of heaven and you gave your life for me. I recognize that you are the Messiah. I recognize you are the Savior. I recognize I could not be forgiven and I could not have relationship with the Father unless you became the holy, pure sacrifice. So God, I invite you into my life. Forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of my wrongdoing. I choose to follow you today. I give you my life, my breath, my intentions, my motives. I hand over all of me to all of you. Come into my life, change and transform me. I now belong to you and will live for you from this day and forevermore in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's just clap. Let's just do an online cheer. Come on now. That all those people that have given their life to the Lord, whether you're watching live or whether you're on a repeat, all the hand claps that you'll see now lighting up the page, right, are actually um, people cheering with you and celebrating with you that you've come into the kingdom of God. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Amen. The angels are rejoicing right now. The word of God says that your, your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And it's a great moment in history uh, for us to be part of. And a great moment in time for you to fully surrender to God. Amen. Guys, I, I think you would agree that God has been speaking to us tonight. Um, Psalm 63. And it's exciting that we've journeyed this far through. Um, it, it really is a blessing. It really is a blessing. Uh, we'll be here tomorrow night at the same time. Just to remind you, on a Wednesday night, we have um, a, a ladies' meeting, online meeting, every Wednesday night uh, through the medium of Zoom. And if you go onto the Facebook, you'll see the login details. Um, and if you're a lady and want to be part of the Zoom meeting, then that meets every Wednesday evening and all the times and details you'll find online. And every Saturday morning is the men's meeting. In a couple of weeks, the ladies will have a Saturday breakfast online meeting as well as their weekly um, evening meetings. But if you can get on to one of the Wednesday night meetings, then there'll be more information about that. That's coming up in a couple of weeks time. Um, Rock Radio, uh, we're, we're live 24 hours a day. Come and enjoy the worship. And then if you would like to be part of um, the church family and uh, get the app and get more information, then just put in the rockchurch.app and you can download the app and share that with people and be part of what's happening. Thank you ever so much for joining in. Be blessed, be encouraged. Take 63, Psalm 63, and put it right here in your heart meditate on these things i don't know um this morning if you got up this morning and, and said the beginning of psalm 62 truly my soul finds rest in god my salvation comes from him truly he is my rock and my salvation he's my fortress i will never be shaken we we, we said yesterday about how it would be great to wake up in the morning and have that scripture to stand on so you've got that scripture to stand on and then this whole scripture here this psalm 63 the very next psalm about an intimate relationship with god is is something that i think we should all aim for and something that i want and um, and I'm sure you want and um, and I believe I have but I want to get more 
and I want to get more and I'm sure you do as well so let's journey on together God has been faithful his grace has been sufficient he's brought us to night 63 and tomorrow we'll be in night 64 and we will rejoice that he's kept us and he's protected us and he's brought us this far and uh, if he's brought us this far and he started this good work in us then he is faithful to complete so have a great night have a great sleep don't wake up out of fear but wake up out of praise tonight and every night of your life for the rest of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. See you tomorrow, same time, same place, 8 o'clock. Have an incredible day. God bless you.